How's it going? So today we're going to do the November 2014 paper. Okay, so this is paper one. And uh, so without further ado, the first question says uh, simplify. You have one and a half. This one we call it a mixed fraction. Okay, mixed fraction in the sense that you have this whole number and you have a fraction that goes out with it. Okay, so you have one and a half. So we say this is um, one and a half here. And then here it's, it's just two thirds and you're supposed to subtract. So the way that you do it, whenever you're simplifying, uh, whether it's addition or, or subtraction fractions, it's always good to uh, have your, your stuff in uh, improper fractions. Okay, so you want to avoid those um, mixed fractions here. There's a way to work with uh, mixed fractions, but then it's not advisable. For the most part, uh, this is a way that uh, is kind of universal. So you get to apply it uh, in any uh, math really. So here, what you do is you say one, this one number by two, the denominator, you get two, then plus the numerator, which is uh, uh, three. So you get three over, over two. Then you're supposed to subtract two over, two over three, okay? So once you're, you're done with this, you can you can actually put a, a common denominator. The common denominator is essentially the, the lowest common multiple for the denominators, okay? So for two and three, the lowest common denominator will be the, the LCM, which is six for our case. So two into six, you get three, then three by three, then you get nine. Then minus, then you can put equal signs, okay, just uh, in, in a straight line. So here are uh, three and two, six, you get two, two by two, then you get four. So nine, nine minus four, then you get uh, five over six like this. Okay, and then that's it, you're done. Okay, so the next part, it says uh, uh, you're supposed to multiply 0 0.45 multiplied by two over nine. Okay, so 0 0.45 multiplied by two over nine. Again, you have this one, it's a decimal. This one, it's a, it's a fraction. Uh, this one, it's sort of non-routine, non okay? You can get a fraction and a fraction multiplying, or you can get a decimal and a decimal multiplying, or you can get a decimal and a fraction multiplying, just like what you're doing here. The reason I'm telling you that it's non-routine is you actually have to inspect what you have first. So for example here, I could change this into uh, a fraction, but then it's not really necessary because I see that nine is a factor here. So what I would just do is I would say nine into nine, then I get one into zero, then I get zero. I replace my comma here, nine into four, then I get zero. Then obviously you're left with remainder of four, then nine into 45, then you get five here. So it's actually 0 0.05 multiplied by two, 0 0.05 multiplied by two, you get 0 0.10, okay, or 0 0.1. So the reasoning here is um, you ignore the, the uh, decimal places, you have two here. So you just multiply the numbers five by, by two, then you get 10 here. Okay, then your number of decimal places should be the, the sum of the decimal places for the number. So here you are, you actually just have uh, two decimal places. So this one should have two decimal places. So our comma should be, should be here. Okay, so it's 0 0.10 point, point, uh, uh, just like this. And that's it, uh, you have done correctly here. Okay, so the next part says um, B part. It says uh, express this one, I'll correct you, to three decimal places. This is uh, just, uh, we, we call it approximation, okay? So you're, you're not changing the value. That's uh, a very useful guideline. If you, you see that you have 0 0.0796 and then you're getting maybe 796, that means you're changing the value altogether. It's not supposed to be like that. You're just changing the, the way that you present it. Someone would have said 99 and then you're just saying uh, it's approximately 100, okay? So here you're supposed to identify first to the, the, the number to which they, they want their, their accuracy, okay? So here they have uh, mentioned that three decimal places. So you first identify the third decimal place. The first decimal place is the first number after the comma. So you're looking at this zero here. So a second decimal place, this one is the third decimal place. So you can go ahead and circle this, okay? So just to show that you're del you want you, you want to approximate for, for this part. And then you look at the next number and then you think, how does the next number affect the, the, the uh, or second number here? So this one, it's beyond five. So if it's five or more, you actually have to round up. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that complicates this question is that this is nine. So if you actually round up, it becomes 10. So you actually have to carry forward the, the one here. So the way that you'd fix it is um, think of uh, three decimal places here as if they're telling you that get a number that is three decimal places. It's that cut and dry. So if you have um, here, uh, some of you would write zero point and then they'll recognize that we have to, we have to up it up here. So this one becomes eight and then they don't write the zero here. B 
big problem. Why? Because they want you three decimal places. Okay. So this one, you actually need this zero here. Okay. Because at the end of the day, you want a number that is three decimal places. Okay. So that was the, the tricky part about this question. But then if you uh, got it right, so, you know, good for you. So let's um, quickly move to question two. Question two says, uh, express 12.5% as a common fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so express this as a common fraction, 12.5% uh, of this. It's equal to, so you say 12.5, then you say over 100. Percent means over 100. That's why when you multiply, it's a conversion factor. When you multiply, you actually say multiply by 100%. So 100%, it's actually just one. You're not changing anything. So here you're supposed to divide by 100. If you divide by 100, that means you've gotten rid of the percentage sign like this. Okay. So, and then afterwards, if you want to uh, simplify this to its lowest form, you can actually just uh, recognize if you're fast, the 12.5 it's actually a factor, but then it might be difficult for you. Okay, so since they want a common fraction, then you, you can uh, just start by eliminating the what? The decimal places. So the way that you do it is you multiply by 10 over 10. 10 over 10 here, it's simply one. So you're not changing anything. Okay, so this is low for in maths. So you actually get 125 here over 1000. Okay, so now uh, this is where it starts and uh, you actually have to cancel stuff out. If you recognize that 125 it's a factor good for you but then if if not then you can start by 25 okay so 25 into 100 what do you get you get 4 25 into 0 then you get 0 uh, 25 into 125 25 into 100 you get 4 then uh, into 25 uh, you get 1 so all in all you get what you get 5 okay so you again 5 into 5 you get 1 then into 40 you get 8 okay so at the end of the day you actually get you actually get uh, 1 over 1 over 8, just like this. Okay, so this one would be your, this one would be your, your answer. So let's quickly move to the next part. The next part uh, asks us to find the highest common factor of, of these two numbers. Okay, so the highest common factor for these two numbers, what you do is uh, you use what we call T diagrams. So T diagrams is uh, a fast way of us ascertaining the, the product of prime factors for the numbers. So for example, 168, we can uh, make clear uh, what factors are in 168 just by looking at the product of the prime numbers, okay? So the way that you do it is just write a T. So you have to do, if you have to do it with, uh, with the ruler, it's, it's, even, it's even faster, okay? So it's even faster and it looks better. So here, uh, whenever you see a number ending in eight, that means two is a factor. So you can actually use two here. So two into uh, 168, two into 16, you get eight here. Then two into uh, eight, you get four. Okay, then you can repeat two since we see that uh, the last number is even. If the last number is even, that means two, it's always a factor. So here you can say 40, then here two. Okay, so two, we can repeat again. Two into 42, then you get 20, then here one. Okay. So here or oh, now you can use inspection to say, oh yeah, three is definitely a factor, okay? Just from knowing the multiplication tables. So you actually get three here into, into this, then you get seven. Seven into seven here, then you get one. The clutch here or the important point to note is that all these numbers, they are just, they are just uh, prime numbers, okay? They are numbers that have two factors only, one and the number itself, okay? So starting two, uh, it's, a, it's a prime factor, okay? So, um, we should do the same for, for 252. So 252 again, our T diagram, then we say two, just because two is ending here. Even ending, that means two is a vector. Then two into two, then you get one, then two into five, then you get two, remember one, then two into uh, or 12, then you get six. So you can repeat two again. Then you get, uh, here you get uh, six, here you get three. Then by inspection, you can see that three is definitely a factor here. If you don't recognize it, you can start, you can start by three or maybe you start, uh, you know, try seven, it's still fine. So three into this, you get uh, 21, okay. So two and, and one here. So again, three is a factor, then three, then you get seven, then seven here, then you get one, okay. So after ascertaining your prime numbers, your prime factors uh, using cheat T diagrams, you just write 
So I'll write exactly the way that I'm, I'm writing it. So here would be uh, two. You can actually write since they are arranged already. So you can actually just write them as as um, our indices. Okay. So two to the power. We have three here. Okay. So here are two uh, here. It'd be just three. If you want, you can do a stage first where you just write all the numbers. It's still fine. But then just to save you time, you could actually just uh, skip that stage and uh, head straight here. So here would be two to the power two. Then here would be three to the power two. Then here would be seven. Okay. So here you write your HCF, highest common factor. So whenever you are dealing with uh, uh, numbers and then you want the highest common factor, what you do is you compare, you compare first, just stick it to your mind that you're taking whatever is common. Okay. So the C here means common. So you compare, you're taking whatever, whatever is common. So here two is common. We are definitely taking two. Three is common. We are definitely taking three. Seven is common. We are definitely taking seven. Okay. So if we had three numbers here, whatever would be common would have to be for the, for the three numbers. Okay. So that's really critical. But then whenever we have a conflict, a conflict, we define it as uh, if the indices here or the powers here, they are different. So you have two to the power three, then you have two to the power two. Uh, there's a conflict. Which one do you take? You take the lower power. Okay. So for highest common factor, you have to take the lower power. For lowest common multiple, you have to take the higher power. Okay. But not to confuse you, we're not dealing with uh, that right now. So we're going to take the lower power here. It'd be two to the power two. Same here. We're going to take the lower power. The lower power would be three to the power one or just three. Okay. So here there's no conflict. We're just taking seven. So uh, here, this one will give you four. Four multiplied by three multiplied by, by seven. So more four multiplied by three, you get 12. 12 by, by seven. You can say 10 by, by seven. Then you get 70. Then you say two by, by seven. Then you get 14. Then 14 plus uh, 70, then you get 84. Okay, so your highest common factor would actually be 84. If this confuses you, then you can just, uh, you know, straight up do uh, 12 multiplied by 7. Okay, so it's, it's still the same method. You'd still get the, the same answer. So that's just about it for uh, this video. I'll catch you in the next video. Yuba out.